guys, it's Heather the Crochet Witch. How are you guys doing today? So today I have something a little different. Something that I have planned on doing for quite a while. Um, I plan on doing it with other swatches also. Apparently I'm just going to jump right in. But uh, I have done it with one. One right now. Uh, I am... I have just got this Big Twist yarn, Big Twist Supernova. You may have seen my previous video where I showed it off. I am in love with it. I'm absolutely in love with this. It's beautiful. It's right up my alley. It is, um, it's very heathery yarn. This particular color is terraforming. Um, it's roving. It's beautiful browns, rusts. Um, it's a size two. Um, it, it does get a little bit thicker, a little bit thinner too, though. Um, it is acrylic and wool. It's it's just, it's all the things that very much are very heathery, right? Um, I love it so much. Um, I love working with it, because spoiler alert, I have worked with it. Do you know, having worked with it too, let me tell you, I know this isn't exactly a review video, but having worked with it, uh, those of you who know that I have kept my favorites list pretty well the same <laughs> for quite a while. Uh, you know that I have had Lion Brand Ferris Wheel on my list. Um, let me just say, and that doesn't have wool in it. No wool in that yarn. But this uh, yarn reminds me a lot of Lion Brand Ferris Wheel. Like a lot. Um, that, that yarn is classified as a four weight though, but it is a very, very thin four weight. And this yarn is classified as a two. And quite a bit like there are parts of this that are quite thin but there are parts of this that are thick for a two so I mean it does vary I'm not gonna lie to you about that um so maybe like a, a slightly thinner ferris wheel but it acts the same it twists the same um but it does have wool in it and obviously the coloring is different I will show you the way it looks worked up though because the point of today's video is the care instructions basically um Will it care instruction is the is the big question, right? Um, Joanne's did something that they're they're pretty typical of doing, and I'm not saying they're wrong for doing this. What I'm saying is that if you look at, I'm pretty sure. Do I have any on hand? Do I have a big twist value on hand? I don't think I do. Surprisingly, because I'm usually I'm usually pretty uh pretty stocked in my big twist land here. I'm a big fan of the Joann's yarn. Um, but I'm pretty sure that if you look, one of the interesting instructions on a big twist value, which is just a value acrylic, is that it is machine washable, but they do suggest that you <clears throat> do not tumble dry and that you lay it flat to dry. Which I have to tell you, maybe I'm a bit of a rebel but I tumble dry it all the time. Now I do dry my clothes on um, a low heat setting. Um, that's just something I I never used to, but ever since uh, moving in here with David, he, that's what he prefers, so that's just what I do now. Um, it doesn't make a huge difference to me. I don't really care one way or another, so like I just let him, you know, you gotta let people have their wins. <laughs> that's one of his wins. Um, so, if, if it makes a big difference to you, you may want to try your own experiment. But my heat is going to be done uh, on a low heat level. But uh, that's what my um, my drying has always been. Like, I have blankets. I have tons of blankets made from uh, this, you know, Joanne's Big Twist Value. I have Big Twist Value made in the same blanket as Red Heart Super Saver, which can be washed and dried as per the instruction. Um... And no issue, nothing funky happens, no shrinkage, no stretchage, no, no nothing weird happens, right? Um, nothing. Now this one um, is, like I said before, it's 80% <clears throat> premium acrylic and 20% wool. Um, is that why they ask you to not tumble dry and to dry flat? I don't know, because you can machine wash this. I don't know their reason. I don't know if they're just trying to save face and uh, let that be on every a yarn that they put out now so that, you know, nobody 
ruins anything and blames them. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But what I do know is that I want to find out what happens when you work up some swatches <laughs> and, and wash and dry them. So I have here, and look how beautiful these are, you guys. Like I said, I know I didn't do a proper actual review on this yarn, but this is a double, just double crochet. And this is a granny square. And like just your regular granny square. And I think they're beautiful. I love the way this works up. Like this alone makes me want to make just like a scarf or something made with just double crochet. Like you know how long it's been since I've made just just a double crochet scarf or you know something like that. I I think this would be beautiful or like a you know your basic beanie with just just double crochet. That'd be beautiful. And it does look like the planet like a planet surface. <laughs> I think that's gorgeous. I think that's double crochet is like the way this was like meant. I, I kind of want to work something up with single crochet now. I know I'm getting myself off topic doing this or talking about it like this, but I'm wondering because it's so pretty. And I know if you do something, if you do a longer project or something, you're not going to have these same color changes this way. Like it'll be, a, you know, this would be much more spread out, but it might still have a really pretty effect. I don't know. This is, but this is gorgeous in my opinion. I, I don't know if you guys feel the same. We're not really here to debate whether it is pretty, but I still wanted to just say it is beautiful in my opinion. Same with this square. So pretty. And like, look how it's, the rust is just spread out and gorgeous. Now I did these two different ones because I figured, and we're going to measure them before it gets thrown into the wash and all, don't worry. But I figured the double crochet, the stitches are um, closer in proximity. I know they're not tighter. If I wanted to do tighter, I guess I could have done the single crochet, but um, closer in proximity. So if like felting happens or anything, they're going to be right there next to each other to kind of cling together, right? Um, so if anything wonky along the lines of like clinging together wise happens this will be our, our test dummy for that. Um, and we will lay this down and measure it in a sec here. And as far as the granny square goes, I didn't want to like spend a lot of time doing anything like lacy and intricate. And this is certainly not lacy, but it does have holes and it does have some degree of, you know, a design. Um, so I figured if, if this were to dry funky and I don't know super stretch out here or or super tighten up here or just dry wonky so it's you know um and mess up the the design aspect we'll get a good idea of that too right because there are a pattern of holes here like again it's not lace I didn't I did all this you know in a few minutes tonight but um it's not anything lacy or or anything that'll show that off but you know it's more than double crochet <laughs> so I did a little something so it'll be two different squares anyway so all of that being said I have my fancy little heart I love this thing I got it from knit crate I don't know several years ago I love it so much um it says all you need is yarn <laughs> and I love this thing it's I think it's the only one I actually own right now so yeah trying to be really careful with it so let's make notes here we're gonna write down this will be the double crochet square and we'll write down the dimensions there and we'll write it down before washing Let's see, I'm going to do inches because I'm in the U.S. and that's what I'm going to do. But we have got, of course it's not going to be an exact, of course it's not. I was hoping for just like straight up five inches, but no, oh wait, ah, pretty close. Now that I laid it flat, flat. close enough to say five inches. So I'm going to go with five inches. So five inches wide. 
by, oh, don't fall. By four and three quarters, give or take a little bit here. Just a little bit. So, five inches wide by four and three quarters height. You know, that's probably not how you would normally um, write them down, but you know, I am no scientist or mathematician or professional for that matter. So that's how I'm going to write it down. And it's, we're still going to figure it out, right? So, and then we're going to go with the granny square. before washing all right this one will be a little bit smaller I know it's a little bit smaller but it should actually be square or pretty close to I believe we got four and a half there let's see if the other side matches up yep four and a half by four and a half See, I told you a little bit smaller. I actually knew what I was talking about. All right. So that is our dimensions for these. Now I am filming this at night, as I always do. And I do have to wait till the morning to do my laundry. But I'm going to go throw it in now. And wait till David gets home with his work clothes to do the laundry. So they're going to sit there tonight, patiently, and it's just going to be like, I don't know if my editing thing has a cool clock wipe, but it's going to be, you know, it'll be something. We'll do like the wavy Scooby-Doo time forward, you know, for you. It'll be a mere moment for you guys. Um, I will have a good sleep and come to you tomorrow evening probably, but um, yeah, we're going to fast forward, wash these, dry these. And uh, you can see, just for the record, for clarification, for science purposes, you can see this yarn already does do um, some fuzzing, some haloing. I don't want anybody to think that that is, uh, like, I don't know what we'll get tomorrow. But if it only has this much, should it only have this much, I don't want anybody to think that's a product of the drying. So I just wanted to try to show it to the best of our ability here. You can see up here the little, you can kind of see against the darker too. So there is a bit of haloing going on. But it is there, it's no, it's no latte cake by any means, but I mean there's 20% wool in here and I'm sure that adds to that haloing. We'll see if this one will this one's a little more solid. Maybe if I lay it as flat as I can on my hand. I don't know. There we go. A little bit over on the edge there, maybe. See that? <laughs> but that thought just occurred to me to show you guys that there is a little bit of haloing going on. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll see what the washer and the dryer do with that. Mostly the dryer, since it says it can be washed already. All right, I'm going to leave you guys on that note. They're so pretty. <laughs> but All right. <clears throat> we'll see you tomorrow. Bye, guys. All right, so hi, guys. I'm back. <laughs> um... I got the results back. Sorry, I'm a little more frazzled because it's the next day, even though I'm still in my pajama top. You're going to have to excuse that. Sorry. <laughs> um, because I wanted to hurry up and get this video done. I got the squares out of the dryer. I have to say, well, I'm not going to tell you if I'm pleased or not. How about that? I will just show you. Um, so it's been just a couple seconds for you. And then we did the fancy screen blur or clock wipe or you know whatever it is that I found to edit into there hopefully I found something and didn't just 
let the camera roll. Knowing me, I might have. Anyway, um, here's what they looked like when they came out of the dryer. So remember, these were fully washed and fully dried. Um, I'm going to show you, because I know I just showed you the halo. And honestly, in the camera, it doesn't look like there's a huge difference. There, There is a bit more fuzz. There's not a huge amount more fuzz. If I'm being honest, like maybe you can really tell where the darker part of the yarn is, but it's still really not a whole heck of a lot, if I'm being just fully honest. I expected more. Like, it's roving to begin with, and it's got a tiny bit of wool, which I suppose could have a small part of it. Um, I don't think generally wool loosens up. It tends to tighten up, though, so I think it's more the spin of the yarn that has the, uh, the blame for this. But, um, but yeah, this is, uh, this is what, what we have back. So, I mean, to compare what this looked like a minute or two ago when I was holding it up, here's what we have. And here's another close up of the beautiful double crochet, which I think is just stunning. I absolutely love, love, love the way this looked, this worked up. Um, as you can see, the double crochets are still like nothing felted together, nothing is weirdly shaped, nothing is strange or out of the ordinary. You can definitely still see those beautiful double crochets. Um, and then again, I know I didn't do like anything super lacy or anything, but I did a bit of a pattern with the granny clusters. Um, now obviously, I don't know how well you can tell from on the video, but uh, the square as a whole, like, I can tell you when I measure this that it's scrunched down just a little bit. Um, it's not so obvious with this one, but I can tell you for sure this did just because the clusters are a little bit tighter. And that's why I wanted to do a more open pattern. Like, you can tell from the holes that, uh, you can just tell that they're a little closer together, that the clusters are a little plumper because everything is kind of squished a little bit. Um... The only thing that I can tell you from my own personal experience is that over the summer I had with my granny squares that I had been doing for my, um, from my vintage yarns, I came across a skein of yarn that I had already, like I started working with it. And as I got further into it, this was one that I had gotten from like Goodwill. It was hundred percent acrylic. Um, so there was no, as far as to the yarn, there was no real allergies going on, but I start itching and itching and itching. Now this yarn is super old. Who knows what like treatments for bugs, rodents, it could have seen throughout the years, what chemicals could have been in it. Who knows what it's been through in its life. Something in that yarn made me itch. And so I had powered through it and because it wasn't giving me a rash, it was just making me itchy. I powered through it, finished the squares, um, and then I just took the stack of squares didn't sew them together. I didn't want to do anything like that because the project wasn't ready for that. And I didn't want them sitting around making me itchy whenever I handled them. And I threw them into the wash. When they came out, just because they were not stitched together anywhere, they were singular squares, all of them had plumped up in the fashion that I'm talking about this yarn doing. So, and that was 100% acrylic. So, um, that happens. <laughs> it's not because of you know, oh, Heather went against the washing and care instructions. Oh, she, she dried it. That's not why. <laughs> I can tell you right now that's not why. Um, so, all of that said, as far as appearance-wise, nothing is unexpected for being able to wash and dry it, in my opinion. Now, I wanted to add, like, a little asterisk here that... Um, if you decide to go against the grain, if you decide to make something from yarns like this, wash it. Ma or make a swatch. Wash it. Dry it. Um, do all the things if you want. Because your opinion, like if, if this were in your house and you wash it and you dry it and it comes out the same. Or if, if I just pass this to you through the screen, like here you go. Um, your opinion of it 
might differ than mine. You might look at this and go, I couldn't deal with this. I don't know what Heather's talking about. I don't like this. Um, if that be the case, obviously you wouldn't want to wash it and dry it. Um, or your dryer or washer might be different than mine. Like maybe your cool, maybe my cool setting is way cooler than yours is or slightly warmer than yours is. Um, or maybe you just can't handle washing it or cooling it on and drying it on a cool cycle and you have to dry it warmer and you want to experiment with that. Um, experiment with, with it how you want to wash it and dry it is, you know, what I'm saying. Uh, this was washed on a heavy duty wash cycle because I wash all my clothes like that. And this was dried on a, a cool dry cycle. So, um, but it, as you can see was not laid flat to dry. Well, can't see that, but I can promise you it wasn't because that's the point of the video. Um, now, let's get a measurement of these things so we can be on our way and all, but I get the trusty tape measure out here again. The double crochet before washing, we had it, I had written down, I know, about five inches wide and about four and three quarters high. But I know I was being a little bit generous with it also because um, it was it was a little bit more narrow than that. I just didn't want to go into like some exact fraction and such. So let's look at the width that we got here. For the width, we have almost exactly four and three quarters. So we only lost about a quarter of an inch. So that's not, that's not that much. And like I said, I know it was give or take before. So it might have been a little bit less than five inches before, meaning we didn't even lose a quarter of an inch. Um, for the height of it, if I had down about four and three quarters, hi Mav. And we are down to about four and a half inches. So again, about a quarter of an inch. So really not bad at all. And when you wash something, I mean, especially, okay, if this were in a full blanket, if this were sewn to other squares, I feel like it holds its shape and size better, <clears throat> excuse me, better with other ones to pull against it, right? When it's just this little one. I feel like it's going to curl up on itself a little bit regardless of the fiber of it. Like a, a full acrylic one will do the same because like I said, the acrylic of the granny square did that. Um, so I don't feel like that's a to blame thing with the yarn fiber. I don't feel like it's the way I, you know, dried it thing. Like I think that any of them would do that with something this small. I think if you made a whole blanket, that would have been a different story. <laughs> or maybe the blanket would have, I mean, on a grand scale, a blanket with a quarter of an inch lost to drying isn't going to be that great of a loss. I mean, if it is, maybe reconsider, but <laughs> um, like maybe you're right down to the T of measuring it. I don't know, but you know, I can't make that judgment for you, right? You can. <laughs> the granny square measurements, we had about four and a half inches by four and a half inches, and we are getting, so that's the half. So we're getting just under four and a quarter. So it did scrunch up on itself a little. And just under four and a quarter. So we lost just over a quarter of an inch. So, yeah. I, I mean, I said I could tell her, especially by the granny square, that that one squished up a little. But, you know, again... Uh, my acrylic ones did the same. I fully expect that uh, I normally wouldn't just make a square and wash it. I would make the whole blanket <laughs> and wash it. But like I said, it, it still held its shape. It didn't felt together. Um, if this is something that you can live with, then I would say by all means. Now, maybe, maybe if you're making a garment, you might want to consider... If you're going to plan to wash it and dry it, you might want to consider making the garment just a little bit bigger and then wash it and dry it. Um, but like I, I am a blanket maker. So to me, losing that much of the blanket isn't, 
it's not going to matter. And perhaps when you make a sweater, losing that much of the sweater isn't going to matter. Um, cause like my other plan for this was a cardigan and I tend to make stuff like that way too big anyway, or way too small. And I'm not going to wear it in the first place, but <laughs> cause I'm not that good at making stuff like that. Um, but if I'm wearing, if I'm making it way too big and I wash it and I, I lose a tiny bit, that's okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm not really fussed about it. Um, but yeah, I would, I would call this fine. Like I, I fully plan to make my blankets and wash and dry them and have no issue at all. Um, but I will leave that up to you guys. Um, me personally, I would call this a wash and dry success. So, um, am I going to rebel against the care instructions? Yeah, I, I probably am, but you can let me know in the comments what, what you would do, um, or what you have done or, you know, what you think. Um, but yeah, I will leave that decision up to you. I just thought I would show you. So, and let me know in the future if there are any other yarns that come out that you want to know um, about. I mean, there's probably some obvious ones that you would not disregard the care instructions on. I'm not going to buy like a $100 yarn and then not, not follow that care instruction on. But um, yeah, maybe there are some other ones in the future that I'll, I'll take a look at too if you're interested. So, all right. I will talk to you later, my lovelies. Bye, guys. <laughs>